Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist here with a look at High Octane Bumblebee. The Bumblebee of Age of Extinction's first wave of deluxe is in hold. Wait, wait, come back! Come back! Hear me out, hear me out. This is an entirely new toy with a decidedly darker hue to his alt mode, which, uh, well, it is a Camaro, but it, it's not that Camaro! It, look, if you stick around for the review, there'll be cookies at the end. I totally am not lying, except for the parts where I am. We're back to a pre-2000s Camaro chassis for Bumblebee, 1967 this time, and he is painted hardcore noir. It's a really pleasant car sculpt, and hey, remember all that easily ignored paintwork on Crosshair's car mode? Bumblebee's got paint apps on nearly every outer panel of his vehicular form, with the center third being a shell of clear plastic that's coated with flat black ink that looks a lot like, well, black cast plastic. Also like crosshairs, Bumblebee's got the advantage of delicious painted rims and depressing unpainted sculpting on the front and rear ends of his muscle car morphology. The skeleton of this transformation draws from the same bucket of conversion concepts that many movie Bumblebee toys have drawn from before. The arms and legs come from the same physical sources, the feet fold down that certain way, his doors and front wheels swing back, and etc. Bumblebee's torso is where things get slightly more interesting. The front hood and bumper squeeze a far more physically accurate transformation into a fairly tiny mass. Collar wedges pop open to reveal his head, and the front bumper straight up splits, bends, and clips in without cheating whatsoever. That's been done in a variety of ways on the modern Camaros, but it's kind of cool to see on the more angular components of a classic Camaro chassis. High Octane Bumblebee pulls a neat trick of transforming from a black car into a mostly yellow robot, albeit by having most of that car mode fold up into a notable backpack. He's also a little... thin. Something I recall from the original 70s Camaro Bumblebee that debuted back in 2007. As with Crosshairs, this Bumblebee has had a lot of his paint allocations spent on his vehicle mode, but his body uses a mixture of yellow and gunmetal plastics that do a really good job of substituting for all the unavailable ink. Both plastics are pretty good at capturing light and making use of natural shading. Bumblebee's head also has some boss paintwork blazing up his eyes and enmetalling his mouthless facial features. It's been four films, hasn't he got that busted squawk box fixed yet? Proportionally, high-octane Bumblebee's arms are kinda short and his legs are kinda long. It sorta works in several poses, but simply standing he looks a little odd. The backpack sort of exacerbates the issue as well, being this huge lump on the back of his shoulders and then he's all funny looking underneath. He's also got a firing missile on his right forearm, pressure loaded and kinda pointless. You can toss the projectile aside, but the launcher is permanently affixed to the forearm and locks both arms together in car mode, so... You know, maybe I'll uh, keep the missile in there. That way it looks more like a weapon and less like a... growth. You've proved you have a function to me, little missile. Happy birthday. Bleep bloop blorp, it's Bumblebee. His head's on a ball joint and yo, it's actually a pretty decent one. He's got a circular waggle range that I can appreciate and a, a pretty hefty nod range so he can be all like, yeah, uh-huh, yep, yeah, yeah, I know I still didn't fix my throat, I got weird problems. Um, there's even like a cavity in his throat to accommodate uh, the missile in vehicle mode. His shoulders are uh, part of a weird thing about uh, just his arms in general. Because this is not actually the shoulder joint, this is the transformation joint. The shoulder joint is a faux ratchet, but a supremely effective one. A little too effective because it's way harder to move the ratchet joint than it is to move the transformation joint. And the transformation joint moving around starts causing, like, it, it bangs against this and causes it to flex and it's a little bit freaky. The tolerance on these shoulder joints is just way too friggin' tight uh, on both of them. Like, you have to apply a pressure in a very particular angle while almost pushing back slightly with the rest of the figure itself. Uh, he's got bicep swivels, and then his elbow joints are similarly super, super tight. Although, since they're just on the middle of the arm, it's a lot easier to, you know, create a fulcrum force and bend them properly. And, I mean, the upside of all this is that he's probably not going to have droopy arm syndrome if you give him some gigantic accessories, but... If you're buying another Bumblebee, are you even wanting to give him giant accessories? I don't know. It's your call. He can, he can also flap his wings. See, he can be all like, I'm afloat like a butterfly. Sting like a b bee. Bumblebee. They don't actually sting. That's... Man. It, it keeps occurring to me that the more badass movie Bumblebee gets, his name is still Bumblebee. He's bumbling. Uh, these flaps here, I guess, can flap up and down as well, and they're really good at doing that when you don't want them to. And uh, if you don't have the pectoral plates transform quite right, and that is not just flip down, but kind of 
double joint flipped down and clipped in, uh, they'll actually push up against these flaps and cause them to stick up all kinds of the wrong way. So uh, be aware, that if these things are like this for you all the time, it's because you got to move those pecs down. No waist joint, no excuse for no waist joint, right? Am I missing something? I don't think so, because the hinge for the backpack is above the waist. That kind of sucks. He does have hip joints. Uh, they are universal, and they are not faux ratcheting, and they're quite pleasant to play around with, as is his thigh swivel. He's got a knee. Uh, it's a decent knee, but it is super, super high up the leg. Like, check out how much of his leg is shin and calf. Uh, also, with the thigh swivel and the knee bend, these car humps sticking off the back of his legs, which are, you know, they're on model. They're uh, revealing that detail there in the middle of his leg. But they also are sticking off so much, they tend to bang into each other when you try to do poses that involve the thigh swivel, so... If you're okay for sacrificing that, I'm okay for flipping those back down. Because with them down, I just think he looks better. He doesn't have big, like, bulges on the backs of right under his knees. And, uh, I don't know, I just think he looks better. Like, we're losing out on a little bit of detail there, and that is it. His ankles can do that, and then if you start untransforming them, they can do that. Which is surprisingly helpful at times. Uh, no tilting, unfortunately. But the nice thing about this guy is... His skeleton, overall, when you're posing him, has a really good natural curvature to it. Like, no matter where you get these obscene faux ratchet shoulders to, to end up settling down, uh, I actually really like the smoothness of High Octane Bumblebee when he's posed. Like, he just looks good like this. Or when you have him firing at stuff, he he just uh, he looks real smooth and real lithe and uh, and organic. And that's, that's, that's a compliment, for sure. Um... There's a lot of people probably yelling, but he's a bumblebee! And, you know, yeah, he is. But I think he looks okay when you play around with him. It's just a case of, do you want to actually have one to play around with? Because it is another bumblebee. I mean, for a lot of you, there's not much else to say. It's a movie Bumblebee Deluxe, and it's a lot like the ones you've seen in the past seven years. That is a line in the sand for a lot of Transformers collectors these days, and there's nothing about this toy that'll push you past that line. But if you want to take a stroll with me past that line, there are a few interesting qualities worth noting. The chest transformation is friggin' cool. And after five billion modern Camaro bumblebees refining and refining and refining and refining the design, it's honestly kind of cool to see some of that applied to a classic Camaro shell. It sort of brings things full circle before the blip blooping radio face heads off into the fresh horizons of being a modern Camaro again. All that bumblebeezing out of the way for a moment, High Octane BB has a great vehicle mode and some nice skeletal curvature in his robot mode with a decent transformation between the two. But he is the requisite Wave 1 Bumblebee, and he does not do enough to escape that shadow, in my opinion. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and that's Wave 1 of the Transformers Deluxes. Unless I trip over an Evasion Optimus Prime before the street date in mid-May, I'm now all done with this Age of Extinction stuff for the time being. Unless we want to talk Constructobots.